Hey, beloved. I hope that you guys are having a good day. And I hope that today is better than yesterday. And based on the day that you're having, that tomorrow looks just a little bit brighter. All right, family. So we oftentimes look at sin from different perspectives. We look at sin in a perspective where mine is not as bad as yours. Yours is worse than his, but his is greater than his or hers. And the reality is we're all wrong. When we see the news and we see the craziness that's happening in the world, we think we're exempt from that. We think that it's those people, those people are crazy. Those people are doing things that are wrong, but not us, I'm good. But the reality is there's only one race, the human race, and we all take part in sin, unfortunately. Sin is missing the mark of perfection, the standard of God. We can try and justify things, take a pen from work, it's office supplies, it's against the rules, you lose your job. Take a piece of gum from work, you work at the supermarket, it's stealing, nonetheless, lose your job. If you are a CEO and you're committing fraud and hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars you've committed fraud with, it's wrong, it's stealing. Whatever it may be, we justify these things, right? Well, it's just a pen. This job, it's supplies. What do they need it for? Or it's meant to be used, right? We take it home with us. Piece of gum is just 25 cents, 35 cents. This store makes millions of dollars. Commit fraud on a grand scale. Oh, millions of dollars. This Fortune 500 company is not gonna go out of business. So family, when it comes to doing things that are wrong, when it comes to missing the mark of perfection, the standard of God, when it comes to sin, none of us are exempt. We all are on the same boat when it comes to that. But the reality is, if we check ourselves, if we examine ourselves, we see we're not exempt from sin. Whether it's taking a pen from work, office supplies that you shouldn't take, which you will lose your job for, or committing fraud in a Fortune 500 company, causing the company to lose hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars, whether they would notice it or not, it's wrong. And when we recognize that we're wrong, we go before God, we ask God to take our sin, change our minds, and we want to receive the Holy Spirit to make us more like Christ, then we're moving in the right direction. The Bible calls us to be born again. The Bible calls us to be new creations and in Christ, we are new creation. So if you recognize you're a sinner, that you're missing the mark, you're missing the standard of God's perfection. And you say, Lord, I see that I'm a bad person. I see that I'm not good. I do things that's, that are wrong. And God calls me, he calls us to confess our sins to him, to say that we are sinners. And we must know that there's a consequence for sin. But if we come to believe that Jesus paid the cost for our sin, if Jesus took on the wrath of God for our sin, we put our faith in that, we believe in that, we will be saved and we receive the Holy Spirit. And therefore, with the Holy Spirit, we can do what God calls us to do. We can be who God calls us to be. Otherwise, on our own, we're just lost. We're going to continue to do wrong and we're going to justify it. We're going to say, oh, that person is terrible for doing that. How could they possibly do that? I would never do that. Because we always have to be good. We always have to be the right ones. It's, it's, it's never somebody else who's good or we're not as bad as other people. But God doesn't have categories for sin where your sin is not worth death. It's not punishable by death, but that sin is punishable by death. The Bible tells us in Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death, period. 
not specific sin, not certain kinds of sin, not a sin on a Wednesday, but not on a Friday between four and six. The wages of sin is death. And it also tells us in Romans 3.23 that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And it continues to tell us that God gave us Jesus, which is a free gift, who died on the cross for us. And if we believe in his death and his resurrection, knowing that we are sinners, confessing our sins, we will be saved and we will receive the Holy Spirit. So God calls us to be like Jesus. Jesus came down not only to die for us, but to be an example of how to live. And without the Holy Spirit, we cannot live like Christ, point blank. So what does God call us to do? How does he call us to be? He calls us to be against injustice, to be righteous. He wants us to be against all sorts of injustice, even our very own injustices. The way we would speak, the way we would think, the way we would act, he calls us to turn from that. He doesn't call certain people to turn from sin. He calls us all. And we have to recognize that we have made mistakes. We have committed sin and he doesn't want us to. And he does not want us to walk in sin anymore. He wants us to be against injustice. He wants us to be just like Jesus. So I've written this here. It's called requirements in empowerment because we've been empowered with the Holy Spirit by God to be a certain way, which is like Christ. So this poem speaks directly to that message. He has told you, O mortal, what is good as best he could Clear, well explained and concise. Pray without ceasing. Love your enemies. Do what's right. Hard times are on approach with depression and sorrow still at your back. You can barely breathe today and your tomorrow is already under attack. But live for right now. Pray to God for the how. Because the devil wants to finish you. However, if you're a child of God, that's something Jesus just won't allow. Tyrants are ranting. Giants screaming, bullies are raging, but it's just noise. Sometimes you have to be silent. Keep humble with poise to defeat them boys. May the Lord convict you, make you compelled to know what it's like to rebuke evildoers, take the narrow path and proclaim the name of Christ. No matter what it takes, in front of all the hypocritical fakes, I know it's often scary to be the one who goes against popularity, but this is your charge. Steadfast in the Lord, persevere to receive your reward. You who are not yet saved, now is the time to come to believe. When you truly trust in Jesus, the Holy Spirit is received. Then you let him lead you, teach you, and feed you. One day you'll say to the old man nature, I no longer need you. Don't get it twisted, unlisted, or torn. The word tells us specifically that we must be reborn. It's best to be prepared before rather than during the storm. So believe in Jesus first, then over time you'll be transformed. You can't fix what needs fixing in your life yourself because you don't possess the proper tools. You don't even know the dimensions which need to be calculated. And if you were given the ruler, you won't use it under the right rules. But God is exact in all matters of accuracy. And if you're asking me in reality, as a matter of fact, he's an architect actually, constantly drawing, to construct and build, and he's the sharpener, and his skills run in the family. After all, his son was a carpenter. So let him put the puzzle pieces of your life together. What's the worst that can happen? You live with him in paradise forever. Please don't let the tides get the best of you. Your flesh may be weak, but the Holy Spirit will keep the rest of you. Lest you call upon the mighty name of Jesus, who has the power to heal all sicknesses and diseases, Cure, change, and save. Deliver you to freedom. Break off shackles that label you slave. So don't be discouraged. I encourage you, stand firm. Something critical, pay attention and learn. The master is to return. I need you. 
I love you. I don't want you to burn. He wants it all. While you have breath in you, you're not too far off. Take it from me. I once was lost. Now I am found at the cost of the cross. The tides are rushing in at full force. Stand your ground against wrongdoing. The slanderous words, lying, stealing, and abusing. You don't belong to the devil, so come in where it's safe. Jesus is the refuge, no matter the place, whatever the case. Love kindness, walk humbly with God, this I pray. Giving in to sin, God didn't make you this way. His intention is holiness, I'm talking sacred purity. And he wants to be your haven, your shelter, and increasing security. We question free will, but Jesus still died as his choice. Don't listen to me, but close your eyes and hear the Holy Spirit's voice. To every girl and every boy, every woman and man, be against injustice among the ruckus and just take a stand. God bless. All right, beloved. So the reason why I'm adding this part to the video is because after watching it, I realized I wasn't looking into the direction that I should have been. So it looked like I was not looking into the screen. So I want to apologize. And now as you can see, I fixed that. And I know how to do it from now on. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so <laughs> now I got it though. And I apologize. I know it's probably a little annoying for some of you. It would be annoying for me. But from here on out, I got y'all. And I hope you enjoyed the video.